In this video, we'll be making a multi-purpose RGB device that can be used to display racing flags, gear selection, a spotter or pit indicator. There are two main electronic components used in this project, a WS2812B RGB LED module and an Arduino Pro Micro. From these components, we can take measurements and design a case to hold the parts. This case design consists of three main pieces. The back cover, a tinted perspex screen and a front cover. With the design complete, the two outer case parts are made on a 3D printer. While the parts are printing, we can cut out the perspex screen. To get the correct size, we'll use the RGB module as a template. Aligning the edges of the LED display with the straight edge of the perspex, and then marking around the remaining sides with a sharp pencil. The perspex screen is then cut from a larger sheet using a fine tooth hacksaw. Once the piece is cut, we can file around the edges to clean up any saw marks. We can now head back over to the 3D printer and remove the 3D printed parts. Next we can test the cut perspex into the 3D printed front cover. It's a good idea to keep the brown protective paper on the perspex to avoid any scratches, marks or fingerprints until the final assembly. Next we'll take a look at assembling the electronics. It is important to note the RGB module has two sets of terminals on the back. One is for output and the other one is for input. For this build we will only be using the input side. We will solder three wires to this and then to the Pro Micro as follows. V negative to ground, in to pin six, V positive to VCC. Next we can place the Pro Micro approximately where it will be in the case and measure the wire. A little extra wire is fine as this can fit inside the case. Cut a total of three wires using the black for ground, red for positive and yellow for the input. Strip the ends of all the wires, then add some solder to tin the ends of each wire. Add flux using a flux pen to the terminals of the LED module and then add a small amount of solder. With the tip of the soldering iron, heat the wire and the terminal together to reflow the solder. As soon as the solder melts, the soldering iron can be removed, keeping the wire in place for a few seconds as the solder cools. The next step is to connect and solder the wires to the VCC, ground and pin 6 on the Pro Micro. Touch the soldering iron on the wire and on the pad together and then add solder. At this stage we'll have the following parts ready. The 3D printed front cover, the perspex cut to size, the module and the Pro Micro wired together the 3D printed back cover and to close the case we will use four cap socket screws. 
Install the Pro Micro into the case and then carefully tuck the wires in and lay the module on top. Take the Perspex and remove the protective paper. Only try to handle it from the edges to minimise scratches and fingerprints. This will fit into the front cover. Then bring the two sections together, checking the parts align. Then screw together with the four screws. To begin the software and programming setup of the device, plug in a USB cable to the Pro Micro of the display and the other end to a free port on a PC. Next open the SimHub application. Then navigate to and select the Arduino tab on the left hand side. At the top select My Hardware, click on Single Arduino and open the Setup tool. As it's a new device, select Start from Scratch. Under the General section, we can type in a new name for the device. Scroll down and find the WS2812B 8x8 matrix. Click on the tab to enable. Check the data pin is set to 6 as this was the one we soldered to on the Pro Micro earlier. If you've used a different pin, adjust to the appropriate number. Under Compile and Upload, change the board to Pro Micro. Then select the correct serial port for the Pro Micro. Then select the box that you understand you will be uploading a new sketch that will replace any existing firmware. Next click on Upload to Arduino. Once complete we can close off the installation screens and head back to the main menu. At the top select RGB matrix. Next open the test data editor. The display will now show test data that we can turn on and off during the setup. Depending on how and where the device is installed, we can rotate the screen if required. Next, make sure the features we are using are all active and enabled. We can use multiple or individual effects by turning them on and off. If we find the display too bright or too dim, we can adjust the brightness with the slider. Here we can check the gear display by using the slider. We can see how other functions such as pit limiter, flags and spotter work by ticking and unticking the box in the test editor. Most functions can be customised or adjusted to suit. For example, in the gear indicator, we can change the various fonts and colours. During the setup, check any boxes that clear the background when each function is activated. Otherwise, we may see some overlap in the displays.
The pit limiter is a custom display created by using the included conditional effects and by drawing an animation of a red box to flash on and off. This is a simple red box to black screen using a 250 millisecond duration for each frame. These are very easy to customise. For example, instead of using the red box, we can draw the letter P for pit. This is an easy to make device that can be set up to only display one effect such as a racing flag or used as an all-in-one multi-purpose display to show flags, gear, spotter and pit notifications. Green light. Go, go, go. Approaching, watch out. 